Now, in all of this, I had no idea of becoming Catholic. And they would accuse me, you're becoming Catholic. I said, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. <laughs> they would come and ask me, are you, are, you, are you headed towards the Catholic Church? I said, no, no. And what was truth about it, I wasn't. I was trying just to, to, to resurrect that, that Christianity I saw in the fathers. This was it, man. This is, this is the faith from the apostles. With all the finery we've put around it today, this is the faith. What convinced me that absolutely that I had to go to the Catholic Church was learning two truths in the course of my study, in the course of my reading. Two irrefutable truths. One, thou art Kepha, and upon this Kepha, I will build my church. And the gates, the plans, all of the will of Hades will not overthrow it, will not destroy it, will not corrupt it because it's my church. So, oh, he's giving the church perpetuity. In other words, there will never be a time where the church is not. So I began to look as well. My church started in 1982. <laughs> Church of God in Christ started in 1896. I could date all of the beginning of all the churches. Where were they before the 16th century? <laughs> what our Lord was saying is the church that he began in the upper room and breathed on them. And said, receive ye the Holy Spirit. That's the church. Now if you can trace that down to the date, that's the church. Hmm. <laughs> now this takes some serious consideration. Second promise. John 16, 13. I'm going away, but I'm not going to leave you orphans. But I'm going to send you a comforter, a paraclete, that will be with you forever. Now, he will lead and guide you into some truth. Now see, those who answer are trained Pentecostals. Let me, let me help you. <laughs> Preaching in a Pentecostal ex, a church is a, is, a, is a dialogue. You have to talk back to really become a part of the message. So, the Holy Spirit will lead and guide you into all truth. Whew. Now, you know what that says? Do you know what that says? That says that the church our Lord initiated in the upper room would never become corrupted. Now I taught the Catholic Church was good for a couple of hundred years. But then it fell off the edge of the earth. That's not what our Lord said. He said the Holy Spirit will be with you forever. Not until the apostles die because you're going to really need it when they die. But he's going to be in the church, guiding it, teaching it, unfolding the mysteries of God, taking the things I've said to you and opening up to you and showing you that this is what the real truth is about. So now if a church has perpetuity and the church has incorruptibility, 
That means there has to be a clear line from the upper room until 1998. That's what I was thinking. Now let's, let's talk about the church that's got these qualifications. No, not that one. No, not that one. No, not that one. There's only one left. No, no. <laughs> no. I'm not going there. No. No, no. No. Because then those who said you're on your way to the Catholic Church would have been right. And then they'll say I lied to them. So no, no, no. But to come back and I ask you the first question I ask you, how can you tell God no? How can you look in the face of truth and say the price is too high? Remember that experience I told you about that just transformed my life? There is no price too high for the truth.